a noble man to turn a good man, but lest he should become a blusterer, a scoffer, or a death. Destroyer. And plot. Spirit is also voluptuousness. And plot. Ah, I have known noble ones who lost their highest hopes. And then they disparaged all high hopes. Then lived they shamelessly in temporary pleasures, and beyond the day had hardly a name. Said they. Then broke the wings of their spirit, and now it creepeth about, and defiled where it knoweth. Once they thought of becoming heroes, but sensualists are they now. A trouble and a terror is the hero to them. But by my love and hope I conjure thee, cast not away the hero in thy soul. Maintain holy thy highest hope. Thus spake Zarathustra, the creatures of death. There are creatures of death, and the earth is full of those to whom the distance from life must be preached. Full is the earth of the superfluous, marred is life by the many too many. May they be deployed out of this life by the and quad, life eternal and quad, and quad, the yellow ones and quad, so are called the creatures of death, or the creatures of death, and quad, the 45 black ones, and quad, but I will show them unto you in other colors besides. There are the terrible ones who carry about in themselves the beast of prey, and have no choice except lust for self-laceration. And even their lust for self-laceration. They have not yet become men, those terrible ones. May they preach the system from life, and pass away themselves. There are the spiritually consumptive ones. Hardly are they born when they begin to die, and long for doctrine joy lassitude and renunciation. They would fain be dead, and we should approve of their wish. Let us beware of awakening those dead ones, and of damaging those living coffins. They meet an invalid, or an old man, or a corpse and I am immediately they say, and plot, life is refuted. But they only are refuted, and their eye, which sees only one aspect of existence. Shrouded in thick melancholy, and eager for the little casualties that bring death, thus do they wait, and clench their teeth. Or else, they grasp at sweetmeats, and mock at their childishness thereby, they cling to their straw of life, and mock at their still clinging to it. Their wisdom speaketh thus, and quod, a fool, he who remaineth alive, but so far are we fools. And that is the foolishest thing, in life, and quod. And quod, life is only suffering and quod, so say others, and lie not. Then see to it that ye cease. See to it that the life ceases which is only suffering. And let this be the teaching of your virtue. And thought, thou shalt slay thyself. Thou shalt steal away from thyself. And thought. 46. Thus spake Zarathustra. And thought. Lust is sin. And thought. So say some who preach death and plot, let us go apart and beget no children. And plot, and plot, giving birth is troublesome, and plot. And plot, pity is necessary, and plot. Say others and plot, why still give birth? One bereath only the unfortunate, and plot, and they also are creatures of death. So set the third party, and plot, take what I have, take what I am, so much less that life find me, and plot. Were they consistently pitiful, then would they make their neighbors sick of life. To be wicked.
taken that would be their true goodness. But they want to be rid of life. What care they if they bind others still faster with their chains and gifts? And ye also, to whom life is rough labor and disquiet, are ye not very tired of life? Are ye not very ripe for the sermon of death? All ye to whom rough labor is dear, and the rapid, new, and strange yep it up with yourselves badly, your diligence is flight, and the will to self-forgetfulness. If ye believed more in life, then would ye devote yourselves less to the momentary. But for waiting, ye have not enough of capacity in you nor even for idling. Everywhere resoundeth the voices of those who preach death, and the earth is full of those to whom death hath to be preached. For in quad, life eternal and quad, it is all the same to me if only they pass I way quickly. Thus spake Zarathustra. War and warriors. 10. War and warriors. 47. By our best enemies we do not want to be spared, nor by those either whom we love from the very heart. So let me tell you the truth. My brethren in war, I love you from the very heart. I am, and fast ever, your counterpart, and I am also your best enemy. So let me tell you the truth. I know the hatred and envy of your hearts. Ye are not great. Enough not to know of hatred and envy. Then be great enough not to be ashamed of them. And if ye cannot be saints of knowledge, then, I pray you, be at least as warriors. They are the companions and four runners of such saintship. I see many soldiers, could I but see many warriors. And cloth, uniform and cloth, one calleth what they wear, may it not be uniform what? They there would hide, ye shall be those whose eyes ever seek for an enemy for your enemy. And with some of you there is hatred at first sight. Your enemy shall ye seek, your war shall ye wage, and for the sake of your thoughts. And if your thoughts succumb, your uprightness shall still shout triumph thereby. Ye shall love peace as a means to new wars and the short peace more than the long. Who I advise not to work, but to fight. Who I advise not to peace, but to victory. Let your work be a fight, let your peace be a victory. One can only be silent and sit peacefully when one hath arrow and bow, otherwise one freighteth and quarreleth. Let your peace be a decatory. 48. Thus spake Zarathustra. Ye say it is the good cause which halloweth even more. I say unto you, it is the good war which halloweth every cause. War and courage have done more dia things than charity. Not your sympathy, but your bravery hath hitherto saved the victims. And quad, what is good? And quad, ye ask, to be brave is good. Let the little girls say, and quad, to be good is what is pretty, and at the same time touching. And quad, they call you heartless, but your heart is true, and I love the bashfulness of your goodwill. Ye are ashamed of your flow, and others are ashamed of their ebb. You're ugly. Well then, my brethren, take the sublime about you, the mantle of the ugly. And when your soul becometh great, then does it become haughty, and in your sublimity there is wickedness. I know you, in wickedness the haughty man and the weakling meet, but they misunderstand one another. I know you. Ye shall only have enemies to be hated, but not enemies to be despised. Ye must be proud of your enemies, then, the successes of your enemies are also your successes. 
Resistance that is the distinction of the slave. Let your distinction be obedience. Let your commanding itself be obey. And squad, I will. And squad, King. To the good warrior soundeth and squad, thou shalt and squad, pleasanter than. And all that is dear unto you, ye shall first have it commanded unto you. Let your love to life be love to your highest hope, and let your highest hope be the highest thought of life. Your highest thought, however, ye shall have it commanded unto you by me and it is this, man is something that is to be surpassed. T-H-E-N-E-W-I-D-O-L 49 So live your life of obedience and of war. What matter about long life? What warrior wisheth to be spared? I spare you not, I e you from my very heart, my brethren in war. Thus spake Zarathustra. Slash slash dot.
of their devil, went thereby into the slime themselves. With friends. 57 TC room chastity is difficult, it is to be dissuaded, lest it become the road to hell to filth and lust of soul. Do I speak of filthy things? That is not the worst thing for me to do. Not when the truth is filthy, but when it is shallow, it is the discerning one go unwillingly into the slaughter. Verily, there are chaste ones from their very nature. They are gentle of heart and laugh better and oftener than you. They laugh also at chastity and ask and plot what is chastity. Is chastity not folly? But the folly came unto us and not be unto it. We offered that guest farmer at heart. Now it dwelleth with us, let it stay as long as it will. And plot, thus spake Zarathustra. 14. The friend. And plot, one is always too many about me and plot, thinketh the anchorite. And plot, always wants one that maketh two in the long run. And plot, I am here always too earnestly in conversation. How could it be endured if there were not a friend? The friend of the anchorite is always the third one, yes. The third one is the sort of present in the conversation of the two sinking into the depths. Ah, there are too many depths for all anchorites. Therefore, do they long so much for a friend and for his elevation? Our faith in others betray us wherein we would fain have faith in ourselves our longing for a friend is our betrayer. And am, thou king, and am, Thus spake Zarathustra, and often we are love we want merely to overly envy, and often we attack and make ourselves enemies, to conceal that we are vulnerable. And plot, be at least mine enemy. And plot, thus speaketh the true reverend, which does not venture to solicit friendship. If one would have a friend, then must one also be willing to wage war for him. And in order to wage war, one must be capable of being an enemy. One ought still to honor the enemy in one as friend. Canst thou go nigh unto thy friend, and not go over to him? In one as friend one shall have one as best enemy. Thou shalt be closest unto him with thy heart when thou withstandest him. Thou wouldst wear no raiment before thy friend. It is in honor of thy friend that thou showest thyself to him as thou art. But he wisheth thee to the devil on that account. He who maketh no secret of himself shocketh, so much. Reason have ye to fear nakedness. I, if ye were gods, ye could then be ashamed of clothing. Thou canst not adorn thyself fine enough for thy friend, for thou shalt be unto him an arrow and a longing for that. Superman, sawest thou ever thy friend asleep to know how he looketh? What is usually the countenance of thy friend? It is thine own countenance, in a coarse and imperfect mirror. Sawest thou ever thy friend asleep? Wert thou not dismayed at thy friend looking so? O oh my friend, man is some thing that hath to be surpassed. In divining and keeping silence shall the friend be a master. Not everything must thou wish to see. Thy dream shall disclose unto thee what thy friend doth when awake. Let thy pity be a divining, to know first of thy friend o. The friend, 59, wanteth pity, perhaps he loveth in thee the unmoved eye, and the look of eternity. Let thy pity for thy friend be hid under a hard shell, thou shalt bite out a tooth upon it. Thus will it have delicacy and sweetness. 
Art thou pure air and solitude and bread and medicine to thy friend? Many a one cannot loosen his own fetters, but is nevertheless his friend as emancipator. Art thou a slave? Then thou canst not be a friend. Art tno you a tyrant? Then thou canst not be a friend. Far too long hath there been a slave and a tyrant concealed in woman. On that account woman is not yet capable of friendship, she knoweth only love. In woman's love there is injustice and blindness to all she does not love. And even in woman's conscious love, there is still always surprise and lightning and night, along with the light. As yet woman is not capable of friendship, women are still cats and birds. Or at the best, cows. As yet woman is not capable of friendship. But tell me, ye men, who of you is capable of friendship? Oh, your poverty, ye men, and your sordidness of soul. As much as ye give to your friend, will I give even to my foe, will not have become poor thereby. There is comradeship, may there be friendship. Thus spake Zarathustra. 60. And am. L.T. Overt. Thus spake Zarathustra. J. The thousand and one gold. Many lands saw Zarathustra, and many peoples, thus he did. The good and bad of many peoples, no greater power, and am, L.T., lit. Zarathustra find on earth than good and bad. No people could live without FRST valuing, if a people will maintain itself, However, it must not value as its neighbor value. Much that passed for good with one people was regarded with scorn and contempt by another, thus I found it. Much found I here called bad, which was their deck with purple honors. Never did the one neighbor understand the other, ever did his soul marvel at his neighbor's delusion and wickedness. A table of excellencies hangeth over every people. Lo, it is the table of their triumphs. Lo, it is the voice of their will to power. It is laudable, what they think hard, what is indispensable and hard they call good, and what really but in the direst distress, the unique and hardest of all, they extol as holy. Whatever maketh them rule and conquer and shine, to the dismay and envy of their neighbors, they regard as the high and foremost thing, the test and the meaning of all else. Verily, my brother, if thou knewest but a people as me, its land, its sky, and its neighbor, then wouldst thou divine the law of its surmountings, and why it climbeth up that ladder too its hope, and plot, always shalt thou be the foremost and prominent above others. No one shall thy jealous soul love, except a friend and plot. The thousand and one gold six L. That made the soul of a Greek thrill, thereby went he his way. And plot, too, to greatness. Speak truth and be skillful with bow and arrow and cloth, so seemed it alike pleasing and hard to the people from whom cometh my name the name which is alike pleasing and hard to me. Honor father and mother, and from the root of the sui, and cloth, too, to do their will and cloth, and cloth, too, this table of surmounting hung another people over them, and became powerful and permanent thereby. Have fidelity, and for the sake of fidelity to risk honor and blood, even in evil and dangerous courses and plot, teaching itself so, another people mastered itself, 
and thus mastering itself, became pregnant and heavy with great hopes. Verily, men have given unto themselves all their good and bad. Verily, they took it not, they found it not, it came not unto them as a voice from heaven. Values did man only assign to things in order to maintain himself he created only the significance of things, a human significance. Therefore, calleth he himself and quat, man, and quat, that is, the valuator. Valuing is creating, hear it, ye creating ones. Valuation itself is the treasure and jewel of the value things. True valuation only is their value, and without the loyalty on the nut of existence will be hollow. Here is, ye creating ones. Change of values that is, change of the creating ones. Always doth he destroy who hath to be a creator. Creating ones were first of all peoples, and only in late times individuals. Verily, the individual himself is still the latest creation. Peoples once hung over them tables of the good. Love which. 62. Ego. Thus spake Zarathustra. With rule and love which would obey, created for themselves such tables. Older is the pleasure in the herd than the pleasure in the And as long as the good conscience is for the herd, the bad conscience only set, ego. Verily, the crafty ego, the loveless one, that seeketh its advantage in the advantage of many it is not the origin of the herd, but its ruin. Loving ones, was it always, and creating ones, that created, good and bad. Fire of love bloweth in the names of all the virtues, and fire of wrath. Many lands saw Zarathustra, and many peoples. No greater power did Zarathustra find on earth than the creations of the loving ones in Quat, good and Quat, and in Quat, bad and Quat, are they called. Verily, a prodigy is this power of praising and blaming. Tell me, ye brethren, who will master it for me? Who will put a fetter upon the thousand necks of this animal? A thousand bulls have there been hitherto, for a thousand peoples have there been. Only the fetter for the thousand necks is still lacking, there is lacking the one goal. As yet humanity hath not a goal. But pray tell me, my brethren, if the goal of humanity be still lacking, is there not also still lacking humanity itself? Thus spake Zarathustra. Nabal to Lohihi. 16. Neighbor love. 63. Ye crowd around your neighbor, and have fine words for it, but I say unto you, your neighbor love is your bad love of yourselves. Ye flee unto your neighbor from yourselves, and would fain make a virtue thereof, but I fathom your unquat, unselfishness, and quat, the thou is older than that the thou hath been consay. Created, but not yet that so man presseth nigh unto his neighbor. Do I advise you to neighbor love? Rather do I advise you to neighbor flight and to furthest love. Higher than love to your neighbor is love to the furthest and future ones. Higher still than love to men is love to things. And phantoms. The phantom that runneth on before thee, my brother, is fairer than thou, why dost thou not give unto it thy flesh and thy bones, that thou fearest, and runnest unto thy neighbor? Ye cannot endure it with yourselves, and do not love yourselves sufficiently, so ye seek to mislead your neighbor into love, and would fain gild yourselves with his error. 
Would that naked not endure it with any kind of near ones, are their neighbors, then would ye have to create your friend and his overflowing heart out of yourselves. Ye call in a witness when ye want to speak well of yourselves, and when ye have misled him to think well of you, why care it? Also think well of yourselves. Not only did he lie, who speaketh contrary to his knowledge, but more so, he who speaketh contrary to his ignorance. 64. I have spake C-A-R-A-T-H-U-5, T-R-A. And thus speak ye of yourselves in your intercourse, and belie your neighbor with yourselves. Thus that T-L-E fool, and plot, association with men spoils the character, especially when one hath none. The one goeth to his neighbor because he seeketh himself, and the other because he would fain lose himself. Nor bad love to yourselves maketh solitude a prison to you. The furthest ones are they who pay for your love to the near ones, and when there are the five of you together, a sixth must always die. I love not your festival either. Too many actors found I there, and even the spectators often behave like actors. Not the neighbor who I teach you, but the friend. Let the friend be the festival of the earth to you, and a foretaste of the Superman. I teach you the friend and his overflowing heart. But one must know how to be a sponge, if one will be loved by overflowing hearts. I teach you the friend in whom the world standeth complete, a capsule of the good, the creating friend, who hath always a complete world to bestow. And as the world unrolled itself for him, so will it too. Together again for him in ring, as the growth of good through evil, as the growth of purpose out of chance. Let the future and the furthest be the motive of thy today, in thy friend shalt thou love the superman as thy motive. My brethren, I advise you not to neighbor love, I advise to the furthest love. Thus spake Zarathustra. Dot dot, he way of the creating 165. 17, the way of the creating one. Wouldst thou be into isolation, my brother? Wouldst thou seek the way unto thyself? Tarry yet a little and hearken unto me. And plot, hey, who seeketh may easily get lost himself. All isolation is wrong and plot. So say the herd, and long didst thou belong to the herd. The voice of the herd will still echo in thee. And when thou sayest, and plot, I have no longer a conscience in common with you, and plot, then will it be a plaint and a pain. Lo, that pain itself did the same conscience produce and the last gleam of that conscience still groweth on thine apple of Karatheon. But thou wouldst go the way of thine affliction, which is the way unto thyself. Then show me thine authority and thy strength to do so. Art thou a new strength and a new authority, a first motion, a self-rolling wheel? Canst thou also compel stars to revolve around thee? Alas, there is so much lusting for loftiness. There are so many convulsions of the ambitions. Show me that thou art not a lusting and ambitious one. Alas, there are so many great thoughts that do nothing more than the bellows. They inflate and make emptier than ever. Free, dost thou call thyself. Thy ruling thought would I hear of and not that thou hast escaped from a yoke. Art thou one entitled to escape from a yoke? Many a one hath cast away his final worth when he hath cast away his servitude. 66. Thus spake Zarathustra. 
free from what? What does that matter to Zarathustra? Clearly, however, shall thine eye show unto me, free for what? Canst thou give unto thyself thy bad and thy good, and set up thy will as a law over thee? Canst thou be judge for thyself, and avenger of thy law? Terrible is aloneness with the judge and avenger of one's own law. Thus is a star projected into desert space, and into the icy breath of aloneness. Today sufferest thou still from the multitude, thou individ UAL. Today hast thou still thy courage unabated, and thy hopes. But one day will the solitude weary thee, one day will thy pride kneel, and thy courage quail. Thou wilt one day cry, and quad, I, am alone, and quad. One day wilt thou see no longer thy loftiness, and see too, closely thy lowliness, thy sublimity itself will frighten thee as a phantom. Who will tone day cry, and quad, all is false, and quad. There are feelings which seek to slay the lonesome one. If they do not succeed, then must they themselves die. But art thou capable of it to be a murderer? Hast thou ever known, my brother, the word and plot, disdain and plot, and the anguish of thy justice in being just to those that disdain thee? Thou forcest many to think differently about thee, that, charge they heavily to thine account. Thou earnest nigh unto them, and yet when is past, for that they never forgive thee. Thou goest beyond them, but the higher thou risest, the smaller doth the eye of envy see thee. Most of all, however, is the flying one hated. And plot, how can ye be just unto me? And plot, must thou say and plot, I choose your injustice as my allotted portion. And plot, injustice and guilt cast they at the lonesome one, but, my. The way of the creating 167. Brother, if thou wouldst be a star, thou must shine for them nonetheless on that account and be on thy guard against the good and just. They would fain crucify those who devise their own virtue they hate the lonesome ones. Fire. Be on thy guard, also, against holy simplicity. All is unholy to it that is not simple. Fain, likewise, would it play with the of the fago and stake and be on thy guard, also, against the assaults of thy love. Too readily did the recluse reach his hand to any one who meeteth him. To many a one mayest thou not give thy hand, but only thy paw, and I wish thy paw also to have claws. But the worst enemy thou canst meet, wilt thou thyself always be, Thou relayest thyself in caverns and forests. Thou lonesome one, thou goest the way to thyself, and cast thyself and thy seven devils leadeth thy way. A heretic wilt thou be to thyself, and a wizard and a soothsayer, and a fool, and a doubter, and a reprobate, and a villain. Ready must thou be to burn thyself in thine own flame, how couldst thou become new if thou have not first become ashes? Thou lonesome one, thou goest the way of the creating one, a god wilt thou create for thyself out of thy seven devils. Thou lonesome one, thou goest the way of the loving one, thou lovest thyself, and on that account despisest thou thyself as only the loving ones despise. To create, desires the loving one, because he despiseth. What knoweth he of love who hath not been obliged to despise just what he loved? With thy love, go into thine isolation, 
my brother, and with thy creating, and laid on me be with justice limp after thee. 68. Thus spake Zarathustra. With my tears, go into thine isolation, my brother. I love him who seeketh to create beyond himself, and thus succumbeth. Thus spake Zarathustra. 18. Old and young women. Why stealest thou along so furtively in the twilight, Kustra? And what hiddest thou so carefully under thy mantle? Is it a treasure that hath been given thee? Or a child that hath been born thee? Or goest thou thyself on a thief's errand, thou friend of the evil? Verily, my brother, said Zarathustra, it is a treasure that hath been given me. It is a little truth which I carry. But it is naughty, like a young child, and if I hold not its mouth, it screams too loudly. As I went on my way alone today, at the hour when the ton declineth, there met me an old woman, and she spake thus unto my soul, and quoth, much hath Zarathustra spoken also to us women, but never spake he unto us concerning woman, and quoth. And I answered her, and quoth, concerning woman, one should only talk unto men, and quoth, and quoth, talk also unto me of woman, and quoth, said she, and quoth, I am old enough to forget it presently, and quoth, and I obliged the old woman and spake thus unto her, Everything in woman is a riddle, and everything in woman lieth one solution it is called pregnancy. Old and young women. 69. Man is for woman a means, the purpose is always the child. But what is woman for man? Two different things wanteth the true man, danger and diversion. Therefore wanteth he woman, as the most danger. Asterisk. House plaything. Man shall be trained for war, and woman for the recreation. Of the warrior, all else is folly. Two sweet fruits these the warrior liketh not. Therefore liketh he woman, bitter is even the sweetest woman. Better than man doth woman understand children, but man is more childish than woman. In the true man there is a child hidden, it wanteth to play. Up then, ye women, and discover the child in man. A plaything let woman be, pure and fine like the precious. Stone, illumined with the virtues of a world not yet come. Let the beam of a star shine in your love. Let your hope say, and quad, may I bear the superman, and quad. In your love let there be valor. With your love shall ye assail him who inspires me with fear. In your love be your honor. Little does woman understand otherwise about honor. But let this be your honor. Always to love more than ye your love, and never bait a second. Let man fear woman when she loveth, then maketh she. Every sacrifice, and everything else she regardeth as worthless. Let man fear woman when she hateth, for man in his inner. Most soul is merely evil, woman, however, is mean. Who hateth woman most? Thus spake the iron to the lodestone, and quoth, I hate thee most, because thou attractest, but art too weak to draw unto thee, and quoth, the happiness of man is, and quoth, I will, and quoth, the happiness of woman is, and quoth, he will, and quoth, 70. Thus spake Zarathustra, and what? Lo! Now hath the world become perfect. 
and plot. Thus thinketh every woman when she obeyeth with all her love. Obey, must the woman, and find a death for her surface. Surface is woman as soul, a mogul, stormy film on shallow water. Man as soul, however, is deep, its current gusheth in subterranean caverns. Woman surmiseth its force, but comprehended it not. Then answered me the old woman, Many fine things hath Zarathustra said, especially for those who are young enough for them. Strange, Zarathustra knoweth little about woman, and yet he is right about them. Did this happen, because with women nothing is impossible? And now accept a little truth by way of thanks. I am old enough for it. Swaddle it up and hold its mouth. Otherwise it will scream too loudly. The little truth. And plot. And plot. Give me, woman, thy little truth. And plot. Said I. And thus spake the old woman.